So in this tutorial, we're going to discuss how to drive high-res cloth meshes in Unreal. Fortunately, our barbarian character here is a very good example of having a piece of cloth that is really ill-equipped for cloth sim. So you'll notice that the skirt here has different materials on it. The area that we want to simulate has got this kind of uh, muddy brownish red color here. The one thing you need to understand about Unreal is that you can have multiple materials on a single scale mesh and you can have multiple cloth sims happening on a single scale mesh, but they are assigned through the material IDs. So for every area that you want to have as one cloth simulation, it needs to have one material. Another thing that is kind of a limitation on cloth sim is that they have to be contiguous meshes. So what's going to happen here is if we grab all these faces and move it, you'll see that they're not connected to anything, right? So when we apply the cloth sim, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint a max distance of how far the vert can move from its skinned version. Since it's not linked to any other verts, these things will just drop due to gravity to that max length. If we paint that length to something incredibly high, like 5,000, it's going to fall off to the edge of the world. Another problem we have here is just how high res it is. So again, ignoring the part that's uh, not in that shader. So let's go ahead and... So as you can see here, that is about 18,000 or so vertices, each one being simulated in a Clossum. That is a lot. Then on top of it, how we have all these overlapping pieces, which means we have either a lot of interpenetration or we have self colliding, which is even more expensive. So this is a very poor piece of mesh to try to claw simulate. Again, it's too high res. We have non uh, connecting edges and vertices. So it's not one contiguous face. And we have all these overlapping pieces that are going to fight each other. And it's three-dimensional. Which means it has a certain amount of thickness to it, which will, again, collapse and interpenetrate. That's basically the same problem. Fortunately, Unreal has a method of doing that. We can simulate a low-res cage and then put that low-res cage, sign that to the high-res mesh. So what we have here is we've built a low res cage. Let's go ahead and just color that something different so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. So now these are two different material assignments. This low res cage has a material assignment and this high res uh, mesh has a material assignment on the parts that we want to simulate. It also has some material assignment on the parts that we don't want to simulate. So the goal is, is that we're going to export this as one mesh. We're going to cloth sim this yellow piece. And then we are going to assign that cloth sim to the brownish red part. Okay, so now we have our character imported into Unreal. We can ignore all these other material slots. They're not important to this tutorial. The only ones we want to concern about is the brown part and the yellow part. So with this section selection enabled, we're going to come over to that yellow part and we're going to right click and create clothing from selection. Now, here's the trick. We want to remove from mesh. Now we don't have a physics asset for it yet, but that's fine. We can add that later. We want to name it whatever we want that makes sense. We can call it barbarian skirt cloth and remove it from the mesh. And now it's gone. Oh no, we screwed up. No, that's what it's supposed to do. Okay. So now 
when we go to cloth cement, we're going to come here to the activate paint cloth. And we're going to pick our barbarian cloth. You notice that it has reappeared. It will only show up when we're editing cloth. So what we're going to do is we're going to very quickly put in the max distance. Now, there's a few other fields that you can use to uh, manipulate your cloth. We're not going to go too far into it. That's kind of getting out of the scope. Just to put out there that one of the masks you can put in here is for backstop. Uh, there's a little bit of a black art to backstop, um, but the advantage of that is that it will collide with the original skin mesh. So remember, the skin mesh is still there. It's still moving with the joints. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to paint the max distance, which is going to tell it how far it can go from that skinned mesh position. The backstop acts as a very inexpensive type of collision. Uh, but it is kind of finicky, so we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. So real quickly, I'm going to do a gradient. So I'm going to click here and then control click, see how it goes from red. Control click there and hit enter. So now I have this gradient tool and I can go into the brush tool, set that value to zero just to make sure that all along here it's set to zero so it's not going to move away from its skin position here at the belt. See, like we had some verts there. So basically we want to anchor that line to its skin position. And of course we can come in here to the smooth brush, smooth out some of these transitions. So the downside as you can see is this is a little difficult to work with, but this cage It's only a handful of vertices. So this cage is going to simulate really quick. Now I'm going to get out of the clothing painting. Simply just kind of close this for now. And nothing seems to be happening. Because that cloth sim is still moving, but it's not assigned to anything that's renderable, so we can't see it. But uh, with section selection enabled, we can right click and we can apply that clothing data to the high res mesh and this is going to act as a kind of wrap deformer and as you can just see there it just simulated and went through the legs so again let's go ahead and reset that just just so we can see it and that's moving pretty quickly so now it's going through the legs, that's a bit of a problem, but it is very performant. So how do we keep it going through the legs? Well, there's two things we can do. One, we can mess with the backstop. That's a little tricky to set up, but it's very performative when you get it to work right. What the backstop is doing is it's using that skin mesh as a collider. And then uh, there's two different values. One is the radius of the skin mesh. It basically puts like little um, imagine it as putting collision spheres on every vertex and you're changing the size of those spheres. The other is the range of how far it goes into. I'm not going to go in the backstop because again, one, it's a little tricky. Two, in later versions of Unreal, they have changed how backstop works. So in this version on Unreal, whatever I showed you on backstop, you would have to unlearn in the next version anyway. So that's not going to help you. The other thing we can do let's go into that clothing properties and let's create a new physics asset so we are creating a very simple collision body it's just enough to get the cloth to not penetrate the legs for now if for example the character was moving around and we were seeing the arm penetrating through his animations we could add more but for now let's go as a minimalist solution uh, but you can see here we have a capsule here and it's moving the cloth 
pretty good. So let's So just to show you how to set that up, let's go ahead and add one real quick. We're going to do a tapered capsule. This is something unique for Clawsim. The advantage of a tapered capsule is that we can change to the ends to different radii. So for example, we can have that end bigger than this end. So we can have it try to match the form of the mesh, underlying mesh, a little bit better. See there's poking out a little bit, so we can just move that out a little bit. Now you're not limited to one capsule per joint. We can add multiple ones. And we're not limited to capsules, although I would recommend not going past capsules because capsules are going to be about the fastest thing that it can update. Uh, they're very, very performative. So he's got a little bit of a bulge there because it's not quite conforming with the legs. So we could tweak that a little bit to get that to, to fit better. We're getting a little penetration here. Just putting that in the wireframe so it's a little easier to see. Um, so yeah, if you had a very difficult shape and we were just having a tough time matching the underlying geometry to keep it from clipping, you could add multiple shapes, but remember that comes at a performance cost, so you want to avoid that if possible. And that's basically our collision body, and that's our cloth setup. Thank you for watching.